it's all gen it's general, you know, it's questions direct from. And it's, I think it's just a really nice format, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's sort of like it's people have genuine questions and. Um, they have a nice discussion of format. Yeah, exactly. And I think the other type style of questions, and you might have seen them, might not, is the business chats and you know, podcast sessions. Um, Very true. That's really quite fun. Yeah, chat to start up talking and stuff. First time property investor. First time property investor. Just want some general buy to let. Tim Shaddock. General first. Oh, fuck. General buy to let advice. Are we filming? We're ready to go when you are. Okay. Hi guys, Ben from Bar Financial Services. This is our Q&A Thursday where we answer your mortgage questions and property questions and buying questions and all that stuff. Um, so listen guys, before we dive into it, if you've got any questions of your own, just put something in the comments, um, DM me, message me, however you want to get in touch and we'd love to maybe do a little video for you guys. And as usual, I've got Will with hey me guys. today, Will Lamerton. <laughs> How you doing mate? Not too bad, thank you. Awesome stuff. Still enjoying the heat wave. That's yeah, I don't know. Attack in the UK right now. I don't know where the shorts <laughs> cut off, but you've got the shorts in. <laughs> you can see the shorts. This is how I roll when it's hot. Are oh, you cut? No other way. <laughs> well, you keep sort of saying, oh, "I'm so hot, I'm so hot," and I, I just say, "You know, I, know I, what? I, it's just <laughs> it's too hot to wear trousers." You want to be productive, though, don't you? <laughs> I want to be productive. Exactly, and being hot doesn't help. With no, it. and you're struggling a bit today. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we've got a question from Tim Tim Shaddock. Yeah who asks, basically, is there any just general buy-to-let advice that you can give? Okay, and Tim is a first-time landlord, or yeah. lo looking to invest for the first time. Um, you know what, it's a really broad question, Tim, and it's probably quite hard to sort of nail in one go without knowing exactly what your circumstances are or plans are, but I think, quite simply, um, just to share with you, we've actually done a video about um, things to do for buy-to-let, Actually, as an investor, there's been a few, aren't there? Actually, with yeah, some quite key advice. But this, this one that's coming out soon, which is specifically probably you know things to think about as an investor, and it's a very sort of point by point sort of um, video, a bit of like a top tips type thing. So I think definitely check that out. I don't know if it's going to be live by the time this comes out. So if it is, I'll maybe put a link um, into it somewhere or descriptions mm. or whatever. But I think for any, I think if somebody's looking to invest in the first time, I think they need to decide. Firstly, what type of land or property investment do they want to do? Because there is quite a lot to it. Yeah. So you could be just a regular buy-to-let landlord um, investor that just has regular tenants. Um, you could look at HMOs, which is houses of multiple occupation, which is multiple tenants in, in one house. You could look at student lets, which is a similar, well, it's the same thing. depends how they set up the building. You could look at commercial in property investment you could look at all sorts of you know weird and wonderful things i think i think the key is probably just to focus on one area that is of interest to, to tim or whoever's watching this video but i think if somebody's just literally starting from zero ground zero they haven't got much experience i would just say go for a more of a vanilla type of property investment i.e a regular buy to let um t you know investment with a regular tenant that's on a six month uh, AST, which is an assured shorthold tenancy agreement, just to start getting your feet. I say, is that simply just because it's going to be easier? It is. Get up and running. It, and maintain. It's probably easy on sort of, sort of different levels. You know, you've got. Um, I think. I mean, if you look at it compared to holiday let, as an example, holiday let compared to a normal buy to let, it's a lot of manual work. You've got to deal with the changeovers, or if you're not going to deal with the changeovers, who's going to organise it? Are you going to keep on top of them to chase it and so do it? just adds extra layers of work. Yeah, and I think it's just, just, you know, if you're a first time in property investor, you've got to think about what type of investment you want, you want to be in. And I think that's really, really critical. Before you do anything else in terms of looking at property and looking at areas and that's, oh, that's a good deal and that's not a good deal, decide what type of landlord you want to be. Probably for 99% of people starting out in property investment, I would say go for a vanilla regular buy to let. Just because, you know, it's one tenancy agreement, one, you know, family couple or, or whatever it is that's you have to deal with. Um, it's relatively easy because in all honesty, you get a, somebody living in, in the property, they're paying all the bills, they're paying the council tax, you know, it's their home, they're just paying you rent every month. So really, all you're having to do is collect the rent yeah. and pay the mortgage if you've got a mortgage. Literally, that's it. And, and obviously, if there's, you know, repairs and things like that, maybe put money aside for that and you've got to get those things organised. But it's a much 
easier way to invest in property than some other routes. We, I mean, we're talking. I can't remember what it was, but it was a couple. Like in the past couple of weeks, we did a we did a Q and A Thursday about is it easy how how to get a HMO? Uh, is it easy to get a mortgage just for a regular buy to let yeah. over a HMO? Because I th- I think that's what we talked about a couple of weeks. We did, ago, we yeah. did, we, and we're talking about for a first time investor in HMO and things like that. That, that you just probably won't get. You need a bit of experience before you get difficult, accepted for that. Difficult, yeah. difficult. Um, but that, yeah, check that video if, you, if anyone's interested. In. Um, again, I might put a little sort of section in the comments, um, link somewhere or something like that. Um, yeah, without a doubt, you can. Be, it's much easier to get a buy-to-let mortgage as a first-time property investor than it is any other type of finance for investment property. So yeah. without a doubt, it's easy on the finance side. Um, and and actually. You know, it, it just it's just easier, period. So I think the reality is for ninety nine percent of you, probably just look at a regular buy to let type investment if you're looking to do it for the first time. Of course there will be some of you who want to be more sophisticated and do something else, that's fine. And as long as you're well prepared and if you've done your research and done your due diligence, I think that's absolutely fine. But don't underestimate the amount of work that can go involved. The, a regular buy to let is a lot easier to manage, particularly if you've got a regular day job, blah blah blah. Um, or even if it's further away, you know, if there's, you know, less hands-on, you can probably afford to be a bit further away because 100%. you don't have to worry about it. But I think for 99% of people, probably a vanilla type of buy to that. Now, the point on that, though, it's not quite as vanilla as it used to be. Okay. Um, what I probably would be saying to most people is seriously, seriously consider doing it through a limited company. And that's quite simply for tax advantages. Okay. Um, the tax laws have changed have changed and change and will continue to change for a period of time so just before we move on just for people that might not understand what what do you mean by go th- go through with it as a, as a limited company just maybe yeah no, that's a really good question we move on so basically there's two ways you can be a, an investor in property either as yourself as an individual like will yep. you can go and buy a buy to let yep and you've got the property and you've got the mortgage and that's it Setting up, doing it through a limited company is basically setting up a limited company. So you yourself set up a limited company and for sure. Invest in a property as that limited. Well, te- company. technically, it is the, the just for those who don't know. When you set up a limited company, it is an entity. It is a separate entity to you. Yeah. So it's almost like another person, if I can sort of describe it like that. So you set up a limited company, which is a complete separate legal entity. Yeah, yeah. And, and you get the buy to let mortgage and, and buy the buy to let property through that separate entity. It's not through you as an individual, it's through the limited company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the simple reason is, it's just moving forward, the you know the government have made some changes to um, tax laws and legislation and things like that, which is basically having a huge impact in terms of the profitability of um, property investment for yeah. regular buy to let investors. And what you're already seeing now is a lot of smaller buy to let investors basically leaving the market. They tend to be the ones that are highly geared because now they cannot offset that mortgage interest only payment um, Mm -hmm. to the extent that they could. In other words, it's just becoming less profitable when you look at the bottom line. So I'm not going to go into this sort of the technicalities right now. I think I think everyone's tax position is very, very different. And this is where getting good independent advice from a good mortgage broker in conjunction maybe with speaking to a tax expert or an accountant is really helpful. Um, Some accountants aren't tax experts, so I think just be wary on that point. Um, But I think the first thing is just to speak to an independent mortgage broker and start exploring that option um, to buy it through a limited company. So it's advantageous to look into that. Massively so. It's going to be, you know... Without a doubt, if I was starting out in property investment right now, I'd be doing it through a limited company, period. Okay. Um, it's just so much more tax efficient. Fair advice. Um, so I think that that would be the way. So although it's vanilla, it, it's getting more technical and a bit more complicated, the fact that you'll have to do it through a limited company, which in itself is a little bit more niche. So again, not all buy-to-let lenders are happy to lend to limited companies. So how does that affect... But there are some that How do. does that affect you being able to get a mortgage? Because whereas you be investing in a property and they'd be looking at you, they now look at the limited company or do they look at you, the director? Yeah, is <laughs> yeah this is where I think sometimes it gets confusing. In all honesty, they look at the same things that they always have looked at, okay. which is you as the individual 
and the property Fair enough. and what income that generates and all that yeah, stuff. So it's simply only going to be advantageous when it comes to tax. 100%. Fair enough. 100%. It's good to clarify yeah. on yeah. that. And, and if, in a way, when you think about, oh, oh, is the lender assessing this limited company? This limited company hasn't been around. No, all. no accounts or trading. It's just, it's just, a, it's just a tax wrapper. It's just, a, it's just a wrapper that wraps around this asset that you're buying and it's tax It's just important to touch on that because I don't know people might take away that, that instead of looking at you as an individual, they'd be looking at the yeah. accounts of yeah. the limited company. So. It's cool to have that verified. Yeah, definitely. And, and the other thing to bear in mind is sometimes um, when you, and this is a really important point actually, if you're going to do this through a limited company, the, the, sometimes, not all lenders, but some lenders want the limited company specifically designed and set up for that purpose of investing in property. And the, when you set up a limited company, um, you have what's called a SIC code, which basically describes what type of industry the business is in. So what the, the bottom line is, you know, if you have another business, you can't necessarily just say, oh, I'm going to do it through that business, that existing limited company. Yeah, yeah. It might have to be a separate one. And again, if you'd be buying what, you know, more than one or two or three or four, you know, you might go, okay, I'm going to have one limited company that, that has all of these properties in it. Yeah. Or you might set up limited companies separately for each individual property. Damn. So there's different ways you could go about doing it. What, the best way of doing it, again, that'll probably be a conversation to have with um, a good experienced accountant um, or a tax planner, something like that. Yeah. Um, from a mortgage broker perspective, it doesn't really matter, in all honesty. Um, we're obviously just going to focus on getting the right type of finance for, for that person's needs. So, although, talking to Tim's example, I'm saying focus on more vanilla, the structure of it is probably going to be is, is, is Makes sense. more complex than it has been. Which is why I think a lot of people are leaving the buy-to-let market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think that leaves room and opportunity for others, actually. I think it to really does. In, yeah. um, but in terms of other things to think about um, for Tim, I think, so focus on what type of investment property you want to get into. Then focus on the type of tenants you want. Yeah. Then think about what location you want to rent in. Um, and I think they're really good starting points. to it's just figure it out before you jump on in. Don't get ahead of yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Don't run before you can walk. Absolutely. I guess in terms of practical, maybe um, things that Tim might want to know is like deposit sizes and things like that. Um, generally speaking, first time investor, a good starting point is probably like a 25% deposit. There are lenders out there um, who will do less. But again, it's like all these things, you know, lending criteria can change. Yeah. Rules can change. A lender could go, hey, we'll allow 10% one day and then the next day say no so i think a good rule of thumb particularly if it's going to go through a limited company 25%. um 25 percent as enough. a deposit so whatever the house is worth you need to get 25 percent together whether you save um to do that that might be one route or maybe you know some you know we've had lots of people who've said oh, i want to release some money from my property remortgage pull some money out use that as a deposit for the next purchase um, that happened a lot more probably in the sort of mid 2000s when there was a lot of house price inflation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, every week your house was going up by so 100 grand. Out the money when they could. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, well, brilliant, I'll have some money out and I'll invest in something else. Yeah, that's and, good, aren't you? you know, a lot of people made a lot of money when yeah, yeah. the house price inflation was kicking off. Um, they could just pull money out, yeah, yeah, remortgage, yeah, remortgage, 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 and go forward. So, so that is still, you know, an option if someone's got equity in their property. Mm -hmm. um, so I think they're good sort of foundations to work from. I was going to ask one more thing is, I know it covers a broad range, but is there any no-goes, any beware-ofs, any, anything you should not look at, anything you should avoid at, at all in, in the whole process? Is it Good question. Um, that's a good question. It's, <laughs> I think really as a property investor, it's probably more about the property. Yeah. Things to avoid. Um, is really just thinking about the property. Okay. And I think the so things to avoid would be thinking about, is the property mortgageable? You know, if a property is not mortgageable and it's cheap, yeah, it's cheap for a reason. Yeah. Now, you know, unless you can buy it for cash, fine, but you're still gonna limit your market if you ever wanna sell it. So I think really being cautious on the property type and whether it's gonna be in the it, whether it's in demand, whether it's in a good area, 
things like that. Really be cautious on the property. So don't just jump into what seems like a good deal without checking it out. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, I mean, not just buy to let investors, but we've had clients who who, who come across you know really cheap properties where um, I don't know they've had some sort of structural issue and. They're sort of surprised they can't get a mortgage. Oh, but it's cheap. I need to buy it. I need yeah, to buy yeah, it. Yeah. But yeah, it's cheap for a reason because no one can buy it That's fair unless right. you've got cash. So, it's, so even if you could get the mortgage on that cheap property, yeah. great. But what, what happens if you ever want to sell it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're going to really struggle to sell Definitely it. Makes sense. Yeah. So I think 100%. really be careful on on, on property on types property. Um, and things like properties above commercial premises. Um, again. Be careful about the area. I think it can, it can work brilliantly. I mean, don't get me wrong, flats above commercial premises, if they're in a great location, not an issue. No. But if it's a flat in a run-down town above a kebab shop, you know, again, yeah. is it mortgageable? If it is mortgageable, you know, is it going to be hard to sell? You know, I think just be very, very careful. Um, and That's I think, fair enough. That makes sense. Yeah. I think the other thing is with flats as well, with flats, look very carefully at who's the managing agents. Um, what the service charge is going to be, um, and things like that. So I think it's just doing due diligence on the property. On the property. Without Fair a enough. doubt, without a doubt. I think that's, that's, it's like anything. At the end of the day, you know, if you, you know, being a buy to let property investor is like running a business. Yeah, yeah. So you just got to treat it like a business and make sensible decisions. Um, but get good key partners involved to help you throughout that process. Oh yeah, definitely. Build a little team around you. Yeah, exactly. I think you offer some good advice there. Hopefully. <laughs> no, no, Hopefully. that's interesting. I learned, I actually learned a few things there as well, yeah. especially about the limited company. Ideas. Yeah. So yeah, it's very interesting. Definitely. But I think, um, you know, why not explore all the different types of property investment? Because I think the more education you can give yourself, the better. You can always set yourself goals. Like when you reach this goal, once you know what's required to actually reach that level of investment, then you can set that goal for when you reach that, you can actually jump into that. So yeah. Having some milestones, some goals, a plan. Definitely, definitely. Forward. And lenders look at you like that as well, actually. So if, oh, really? you, if, um, if somebody wants to get into something, development, you know, they'll go, okay, well, what have you done in the past? So the, if you can show them these plans, yeah. these milestones, these, yeah. you've actually, I've invested in this many properties, I've actually this much in my portfolio. put in some effort and will, it'll work in your favour. Definitely. Interesting. Definitely. So, um, yeah, hopefully that's yeah. answered Tim's question. <laughs> Tim, if you've got any other questions... Please, please, uh, yeah, get in touch. Let us know if it was helpful. Um, share it, um, thumbs up and all that sort of stuff. But otherwise, guys, yeah, like I said, if you've got any questions of your own, um, put them in the comments down below. Um, and um, yeah, we look forward to catching up with you next time. So don't forget, share, 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 subscribe. Like. Do all those amazing things. And we'll catch you soon. Take care. Cheers, guys.